Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Matthew Eugene, and I'm the chair of the Civil and Human Rights Committee. Today, our committee will be hearing testimony and then voting, voting on my colleagues, Councilmember Dodge resolutions, proposed resolution number 673B, recognizing January 27, 2019 as Holocaust Remembrance Day and the week beginning on January 27, 2019, as a citywide week of Holocaust education in New York City. On November 1, uh, 2005, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution to designate January 27 as International Day of Commemoration and Memory of the Victims of Holocaust. This date represents the day that uh, Auschwitz Birkenau, one of the largest of the 40 concentration camps that comprise the Auschwitz complex, was finally liberated. By assigning an international day of remembrance, the United Nations aims to reaffirm that Holocaust, which resulted in the, in the mother of one third of the Jewish people, along with her countless members of other minorities, will forever be a warning to all people of the dangers of hatred, bigotry, racism, and prejudice. The genocide of six million Jews at the hand of Nazi soldiers as well as the Nazi killing crusade that resulted in the death of thousands of homosexual and Jehovah's Witness, hundreds of thousands of people with disabilities, gypsy heritage, and Serbian civilians, and millions of non-Jewish Polish and Soviet civilians and prisoners of war, remain one of the most inhumane in period of the modern history. All too, there were millions of victims of Nazism who were not Jewish. Antisemitism formed the bias of Nazi ideology that climaxed with the Holocaust. This brutal killing spree was referred to as the final solution of the Jewish question in Europe, and its objective was total Jewish ethnic cleansing. In spite of clear evidence of Nazi forced labor camp, prison and death camp, of which there were nearly 40,000 across Germany and its occupied territories, there are still people who are ignored and would fully deny the fact of the Holocaust. For example, a recent survey conducted by the Conference on Jewish Material Claim Against Germany found that 41% of surveys American were unaware of the Arwitz death camp. The survey also found that 41% of millennials believe that the Holocaust resulted in the death of less than 2 million Jews, when the figure is more than 6 million, and 22% of millennials surveyed reported that they had no even heard about the Holocaust. These findings are shocking, considering the enormous devastation caused by the Holocaust. However, more shocking are those that choose to deny or downplay the genocide. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, Holocaust deniers who sometimes refer to themselves as historical revisionists deny the effect of the Holocaust in a number of ways. Some deny the existence of death camp and gas chambers, while others say that the, the casualties were caused by disease, poverty, or general war, rather than a targeted anti-Semitic Nazi assault. This group rely on anti-Semitic stereotypes and hatred, 
which mirrored the attitude that led to the groundwork for the Holocaust. In today's climate, it is more important than ever to put these views to rest. Since the 2016 federal election, we have witnessed an increase in anti-Semitic rhetoric and hate crime against Jewish populations. Even in New York, have also been going up. 60 years later, the Holocaust remains one of the worst examples of where hate-driving ideology can lead. However, as the statistics one mentioned illustrate, education to provide people with facts about the Holocaust are still clearly needed. The Holocaust serves as a warning of what can happen when we let it fuel ideas flourish unchecked. So the timing of this resolution could not be more relevant. And I want to commend my colleague, Council Member Dodge, for introducing this uh, very important resolution. And I strongly encourage the members of the committee to vote yes on passing resolution 673B. Thank you very much. And uh, all those applause are for Council Member Dodge. <laughs> And uh, before we begin, I, I would like to acknowledge uh, the members of this uh, committee who have joined us. We have our council member, of course, uh, Dodge, the sponsor of this resolution, council member Jerome, a member of the committee, council member Kalos, a member of the committee, council member Rosenthal, a member of the committee, and council member Golden Trick also, council member Castle uh, Witt and Council Member Rodriguez, who is also a member of the committee. With that, I want to turn it over to Council Member Dodge. Thank you so much, uh, Chair. Um, today is um, a very meaningful day to me personally, uh, with so many advocates who are in this room, Holocaust survivors, uh, because we need to make sure that we educate um, our young adults, that our future generations remember what atrocities the millions that were murdered during the Holocaust went through. And if you ask people about World War I, uh, many don't remember or don't know anything that transpired during that time. And we don't want to see something like this happen to a really um, time when there was genocide and really not too long ago. And firstly, I, I want to thank um, our chairman, and I want to thank everyone who is here today, uh, particularly the Holocaust survivors who took the time out of the day uh, to attend this important hearing and to speak about why this bill is important to them and why this bill is important uh, for our future generations. I, I've also want to thank uh, my colleagues who are co-sponsors of this uh, resolution, council members Fernando Cabrera, Costa Castantanitas, uh, council member Barry Gredenchik, council member Rafael Espinal, council member Ben Kalos, council member Karen Koslowitz, council member Helen Rosenthal, council member Vanessa Gibson, and of course our chair, council member Matthew Eugene. Growing up, as the son of Holocaust survivors, it was ingrained in my identity that my parents have lived through unimaginable horrors. Although, like many survivors, they didn't often talk about specifics, their experiences during the war impacted my brothers and my childhood. Knowledge of what my parents and millions of others went through just a generation ago is ever present on my mind each and every day. It is extremely personal, a personal endeavor of mine to ensure that our children, our grandchildren, and the future generations never forget what happened during the Holocaust. We all know the saying, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. As far as I'm concerned, true words were never spoken. 
baseless hatred, unfounded bias, and anti-Semitism were all factors in what eventually led to the genocide of six million Jews, which included 1.5 million children. If we want to equip the next generation with the tools they need to build a pe peaceful future, then we need to educate them about the consequences of pre a prejudice and mistreating others. One of the scariest things I've heard in the last couple of months is that 66% of American millennials don't know what Auschwitz is. Furthermore, 31% believe that 2 million or fewer Jews were killed during the Holocaust. And 45% could not even name one concentration camp. This certainly indicates that we have our work cut out for us. As the generation that lived through the war is dwindling, it is more important now than ever that we face this, cri this crisis head on, because it is indeed a crisis. When a new speaker came into the city council and gave out uh, the committee chairmanships, I chose to be the chair of the Veterans Committee for one simple reason. My father was liberated on May of 1945 with tens of thousands of others liberated by the United States Army. And I felt it was my time to give back to those veterans who liberated so many who were able to uh, live now and rebuild their families and future generations and all those who we lost during the Holocaust. And we cannot afford to lose the memories. We cannot afford to let the knowledge of what occurred to be forgotten. Resolution 673 will, for the first time, acknowledge International Holocaust Remembrance Day in New York City. More importantly, it, it will establish a citywide week of Holocaust education, urging educators and parents to broach the subject with the students and children. It is not just the responsibility of the Jewish people to preserve the memory of the Holocaust. It is the responsibility of every single person to do their part and to bring awareness. As acquaintance of mine once told me, and uh, sh uh, a teacher of a sixth grade history class, that when she brought up the subject of the Holocaust in her classroom, several students asked to leave because they were afraid that the lesson would be scary. To that I say, yes, it is scary. What happened was scary. And if we forget, well then, it will be even scarier. Across the city, hate crimes in 2018 rose more than 5%. Attacks against Jews, anti-Semitic attacks, were increased more than 28% only here in New York City. And it's important for us to educate and to let our young adults know that when a swastika is scrawled, what the meaning of the swastika is, how it impacts a person, how it impacts a Holocaust survivor, and how it impacts an entire community. I will just end off by saying that um, my father told me of a story that when he was walking towards the gas chambers in Auschwitz, and my father survived three concentration camps, and he saw this young individual who was probably about his age, about 15 years old, crying hysterical. So my father walked over to him and put his arms around that individual who happened to be a Gentile. And the person looked at my father and says that I don't believe in God. I never believed in God. And at least the people that I'm walking with, they will be going to the world to come after they get exterminated. I have nothing to look forward to because I never had faith and I never believed in the Almighty. And my father responded to him, walking down again towards the gas chambers, that anyone that is walking with us to their deaths will end up going to the world to come because we're all in the same category 
and we're all in the same position. Just a few minutes after that, Dr. Joseph Mengele rode down with his bike, and I was told he used to ride around on his bike, and he gave orders for all the people walking towards the gas chamber to turn back around and to go back to the camps. He was extremely upset because he wanted to be the one to give the order for the Jews and others to go to the gas chamber when, while someone else gave those orders. And that is one of the miracles my father had to survive when he was sent back because one individual who had hate in his blood did not give that order for Jews and others to go to the gas chamber. Today is really a monumental day, and I'm looking forward to, for this resolution to pass here in the city council, and I'm looking forward to hearing from advocates and Holocaust survivors. And I've never felt safer in my life being here in a building with Holocaust survivors who are so blessed for not only what they went through, but for being here and for repeating and telling of the story, which takes a lot of courage to others. And we must always remember to never forget. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you uh, very much, uh, Council Member Dodge for this uh, inspiring and very touching and uh, vibrant uh, comments. Uh, now we're going to, uh, bef before we pass to the vote, I just want to um, capitalize on what you said about the veterans. And I had the privilege also to be the chairman of veterans. And, uh, yes. and uh, I discovered, I heard before the importance of of the veterans, what they have done. But when I was the chairman of veterans, I discovered the importance and the sacrifices also made by uh, American soldiers for the world. And I remember when I was living in Europe, everywhere I used to go to, the people over there, they used to uh, uh, to give a praise and show the, 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 the uh, uh, how they are they're very uh, grateful to uh, American soldiers and also the coalition because they liberated uh, and Europe and also they changed the path of the history of the world. And I think that this is very important that uh, we in New York City, we do remember what they have done, especially you know when they, they liberated Europe and also have the, the Jewish people. Uh, before uh, we move forward, I would like to call to Councilmember Gudensik for uh, Very brief statement. remarks, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, thank you all. Thank you to my colleague, Chaim Deutsch, for introducing this resolution. And thank you especially to the survivors who are here today, uh, again, yet again, to bear witness uh, in the greatest city on earth uh, to the monstrous evil that was the Holocaust. I am not on this committee, um, but I am here today to remember six million of my brothers and sisters including nearly my entire family who were murdered in the Holocaust. I'm here to be their voice. I am here to be a voice against this monstrous evil. I am here to speak for those whose voices were silenced. And I am here to stand up to those who deny the Holocaust. But mostly I'm here to say never again. We have seen a disturbing rise in anti-Semitic bias crimes across our nation and with a rise, of course, in all hate crimes. Some have said that we need to forgive and forget, and some outright deny the Holocaust. To those who deny it, I say the evidence is not only overwhelming, it is unimpeachable, and it is unassailable. You can bury your head in the sand like an ostrich, but you're never going to learn anything like that. And it's only hate that drives people to deny the Holocaust. There can be no other reason. There's no other reason. 
It's only hate. It happened. We know it happened. It's a historical fact. And we are not going to be silenced by those people. To those who say, to us who survive, you have to forgive and forget. Have to forgive and forget. It's been 73 years now since the Holocaust ended, almost 74. My answer to those people is, I am never going to forget. And I don't have the power to forgive. You want somebody to forgive, go ask the six million who were slaughtered who lie in unmarked graves, who went up in ashes, they can't forgive and they can't forget. I honestly don't know how those people live with themselves. I don't know how they look in the mirror every morning and get up and go do what they have to do. That's what they have to bear. It's not what I have to bear. In closing, I want to urge uh, all my colleagues who are on this committee to vote yes on this resolution. I want to thank my friend Chaim Deutsch for bringing it forward. I look forward to voting for it next week at our stated meeting. And I ask all New Yorkers and all people of goodwill everywhere to remember, just to remember, that is what we owe the victims of not just the Holocaust, but all the genocides that have occurred. Unfortunately, most of them within our recent memory, we owe them that, that we should never ever forget because that in itself is a crime. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Councilmember Golden Tick, thank you. Now we are going to hear from uh, Councilmember Kostrowit. Thank you. I was born during the Holocaust, but I'm gonna go back even further. In 1923, my mother, may she rest in peace, was in Poland. She was eight years old in Poland, and one day, they came and knocked on the door and took my grandfather out. And they killed him because he was Jewish. And only for that reason, because he was Jewish. My mother came over that night. They left in the middle of the night. There were four children, and they came here. What my mother went through in that period of time she was in the house when they came in and took my grandfather. Lasted her whole life, the fear and everything else. When my mother would hear thunder, she would take me and my sister into the closet because to her, it was the sound of guns. And she lived with that her entire life until the day she died. The Holocaust was the most horrendous thing that have, could have happened to six million Jewish people. It's, it, it's beyond even words, thinking about it. These people have to live with it their whole lives because even though the ones that got out and escaped, the memory sticks. So actually they're suffering, they suffer their whole lives with people they lost, children they lost, husbands that they lost, wives that they lost, <clears throat> how anybody could forget this. And to this day, to this day, it goes on and on and on. A few weeks ago, I got a letter in the mail. It was so anti-Semitic. It talked about me being Jewish, singling me out. They talked about the Holocaust. They talked about what happened in Pittsburgh. And in the letter, they said, not enough people died in Holocaust, in the Holocaust. <coughs> Six million wasn't enough for this person. I went to the police. It, it wasn't classified as a hate crime because he didn't say, I'm going to come and get you. But nevertheless, that letter really shocked me. So it still goes on and on and on, the hatred of the Jewish people. What I don't understand is why. You know, we live in a very diverse city, and we, amongst us, we live in, with 
all different religions, races, and to this day, why does someone have to be so mean? And I'm not the only one that got the letter. I'm sure hundreds of people get letters every day condemning the, the Holocaust, the people in, that were killed, not enough people. He mentioned Pittsburgh. It's, it's beyond belief. I mean, we've had so many killings in, in different cities in our own country of people that will walk into a church and just blast away people. Someone that went into a synagogue in Pittsburgh and shot people for no reason at all. People cannot forget. <laughs> Senator Manny Gold, who has passed on for quite a few years, he was a state senator, he introduced legislation that children should be taught about the Holocaust in schools. The legislation passed. But I'm not so sure that it is being taught in schools. We have to teach our children about the Holocaust and many other tragedies that happen to other people, other religions. They have to understand. Otherwise, they just grow up and know nothing about it. And that's why today we are confronted with people that say the Holocaust never happened, not so many people were killed, they were, and we miss the ones that are not with us today. So to me, to Council Member Deutsch for introducing this legislation, I think it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilmember Councilman Wheat. Uh, now I'm going to call on the clerk uh, to uh, proceed to the vote. William Martin, Committee Clerk, Roll Call Vote Committee on Civil and Human Rights, Resolution 673B. Chair Eugene. I would I. Drum. Permission to explain my vote? Thank yes. you. Um, yes, this is a, a very emotional um, piece of legislation, one that affects me deeply. Um, some people may know um, a few of the people here on the panel on, of the elected officials uh, were instrumental, uh, along with myself, in uh, creating a Holocaust Center at Queensboro Community College, and I was fortunate to serve on the board of that while we built that center. That center stands as a monument to those who died, the six million Jews who died, but also as a reminder to all of the students who attend that campus that the Holocaust was real. And I'm very proud of having been on the board. I want to thank um, Councilmember Deutsch for his work on passing this resolution. Uh, it's really important that we continue to remind people about what happened uh, during the Second World War. I also represent the district where the final Nazi living in the United States was just deported. And it took years and years to get him out of Jackson Heights. And um, he passed away just a few days ago as well in Germany. Um, I um, admonish those who would deny the Holocaust. And um, as a former New York City public school teacher, um, I am aware that the state curriculum mandate on the Holocaust be taught, and I agree with Councilmember Koslowitz that it is not taught, and uh, more needs to be done. And so a resolution like this is very, very important that we continue to acknowledge the fact that the Holocaust happened. Um, I want to be added to the list of co-sponsors, please, on this legislation, and I want to end by highlighting uh, just the paragraph that um, uh, Councilmember Eugene uh, spoke about before also, uh, which says, the genocide of six million Jewish people at the hands of Nazi soldiers, as well as the Nazi killing crusade that resulted in the deaths of thousands of homosexuals and Jehovah Witnesses, hundreds of thousands of people with disabilities, 
those from Roma heritage and Serbian civilians and millions of non-Jewish, Polish, and Soviet civilians and prisoners of wars remains one of the, the most inhumane periods in modern history. Although there were millions of victims of Nazism who were not Jewish, anti-Semitism, repeat, anti-Semitism formed the basis of Nazi ideology that climaxed with the Holocaust. And so we must always remember that. And in these times where we see Nazism raising its head again in various parts of this country, having a resolution pass is vitally important. Um, and uh, let me just add one little last note as well. When the liberation happened after World War II, at the end of World War II, uh, and as a member of the LGBT community, um, you know, LGBT folks were kept in the, de they were, remained detained even after others were liberated because it was still considered to be against the law in Germany. And it was taken many years after that to change those laws. Um, and, um, and so I also feel that personal identification uh, with the Holocaust as a LGBT, as a gay man as well. So I thank you, uh, Councilmember Deutsch, for introducing this uh, resolution and support it fully. I have to leave to go to an education committee hearing, and that's the only reason I'm going to leave a little early today as well. But thank you. Thank you very much, Councilmember Drum. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Yes, permission granted. I'm sorry about it. Uh, thank you to uh, Chair Eugene for this important hearing. Thank you to uh, Council Member Chaim Deutsch, who incidentally is the chair of the Jewish Caucus and has done so very much with it uh, in just the first year. And this is yet another important item that he continues to highlight. Uh, resolution 673 would recognize January 27th as an International Holocaust Remembrance Day in New York City and declares the week following as a citywide week of Holocaust education. Uh, Councilmember Ben Kalos, my great grandfather uh, was killed on the Danube on Kristallnacht, and those that survived Kristallnacht went to some of my family left immediately thereafter. I come from that part that came to America. Uh, still another part found their way to the camps, and those that survived are in Sweden and scattered across the globe. Uh, so very many people were touched by this. I had the great privilege and honor of going to Park East, a yeshiva led by Rabbi Arthur Schneier, and growing up where Holocaust education was part of the curriculum at the Rabbi Arthur, Arthur Schneier Park East Day School, where we have a, a living memorial to the Holocaust, educating generation to generation, the door of a door, uh, to ensure that folks know that this happened. And whether at my inauguration or at our states of the district, every year and we year in year out, we've uh, we've we've read a, a a poem that speaks volumes to me. It's found at the United States Holocaust Museum. It's a poem by a uh, pastor, Herman Neimoller. First they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. And I think that as we are part of a more secular and broader society in the United States of America, seeing hate crimes on the rise being led at the highest levels of government, it is more important than ever to remember the Holocaust, to remember that the consequences of the type of hate speech that we've seen before and the we're seeing now is nothing less than the deaths of six million Jewish people uh, for, for nothing more than hate. And we must do this. We have to stand up for it. Across the street from my district, we literally had an incident of hate crimes involving a Proud Boys, which is nothing less than an American movement of neo-Nazis. And we, we must be a light unto the nations and spread this. And I hope that this resolution and the support of all the folks here and in this room can bring that light to the world and uh, repair the shattering that happened 
and continues to happen every day. I vote aye. Thank you very much, Councilman Barqueros. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Yeah, permission granted. So, I raising two beautiful daughters, Isla and Yarisa, and Yarisa is 12. And one of the best friends of Yarisa is Mila, whose parents go to Israel at least two, three times a year. We're raising that generation of children that they are learning from each other. And it is our responsibility as adults to be sure that the history of so many people that look like us, human beings like us, are never forgotten. So as a social study teacher that I was in the classroom for 13 years, co-founder to a school, this is a great day to work with this resolution. This is a great day that we send the message loud and clear that when any Jewish is on the attack, all of us is on the attack. And what happened in the 20th century is still fresh. There's so many people that I can see in your faces here, people that suffer directly, the loss of your parents, the loss of your grandparents. I think that we need to take that pain as our pain, and we need to continue standing for each other. So a few years ago, I had this great opportunity to go to Israel with Council Member Greenfield and the Rabbi Association. And being the largest museum there, the Holocaust Museum, was not fun, but was an experience that I would never forget because I was teaching my students about the Holocaust for many years. But it's different when you get to be there and see those images of what people went through. As a council member for 10 years, I have been standing here with my friend from the Jewish community, shoulder to shoulder, as they've been standing for all of us. So as we are voting in this resolution, it is important to express our commitment, our solidarity. And the best way to do it is to make a pledge that when any Jewish is on the attack in our city, in our state, in our nation, in the whole world, we will take it as our attack. Because what the Jew is being able to do after what happened in the Holocaust, and as a Dominican, I'm very proud to say, as you know, that Dominican opened the country to welcome the Jews, when not even the United States made that decision at that time. So we had a history there in Puerto Plata, where many Jews got there, and we were able to show our support. But that group of Jews, they also played a major role for the economic development of the Dominican Republic. So for me, again, no, I can never say that I will understand the pains of the Jewish people as you live it, but it is my responsibility to be there standing shoulder to shoulder. And the best way that I make my commitment is to make the pledge that I will always be a strong ally and friend of the Jewish community in the United States and the whole world, not only as a council member, but from any office that I will hold in the future. The second piece, my commitment is, I represent Yeshiva University and the Nego Y. And I will be working to build, to create a Jewish Latino Council to continue developing the strong relationship so that we can support each other and support all New Yorkers when we are the victim of any hate attack. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. I vote aye, and I would like to add my name to that resolution too. Thank you very much. Yeah. Rosenthal. Uh, Just, I think uh, I need Mr. to say Craig, that I vote aye because I don't think I said I vote aye. Okay. You forgot he's, that he's a member of the committee, though. Yeah. <laughs> Council Member Rosenthal. I vote aye, and just for a quick explanation of my vote with permission. Uh, permission granted. Yeah. Um, I want, I often have a lot to say, as those who know me, but this time I really, there are no words. So I vote aye. I'm grateful to my colleagues um, for spearheading this. So thank you so much, Councilmember Deutsch. Thank you, Councilmember Eugene, for this hearing. Thank you. Uh
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have order five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Resolution has been adopted by the committee. Thank you very much. Uh, now uh, uh, we're going to hear from Council Member Dodge again. Uh, thank you, Chair. And firstly, I want to thank my colleagues for this unanimous vote, important vote. And um, we're also passing uh, this historical bill here in the city of New York. And before I, I get into that, I just want to say that January 27th is National Holocaust Remembrance. Um, and here in New York City, January 27th will be Holocaust Remembrance Day officially here in New York City for the first time ever. And in addition to that will be Holocaust Education Week. So I will be going um, with my colleagues in different areas throughout the city during that week into schools and preferably middle schools and high schools speaking about the Holocaust. And uh, I will also be um, uh, viewing uh, films throughout uh, my district. And the first film will be Schindler's List. It's going to be a free movie for young adults. That's uh, information will be spread out throughout the school system here in New York. And uh, everyone is invited to come because now is a time when we need to let people know and continue to build upon this. And something very historical will be happening um, uh, this month in the city council. And I'm proud to say that working with my colleague, Councilmember Mark Levine, we have introduced the bill in the city council to have a new office in the, uh, in the mayor's office to go out to schools from K through 12 and to teach uh, about hate crimes. So this brand new office will be, um, you will have educators who will be going out to schools K through 12 and teaching about uh, hate crimes throughout the city of New York. And I'm looking forward that uh, we had a hearing on this bill, and I'm looking forward for this bill to pass this month, and also first time ever here in the city of New York where we're going to have outreach. I want to thank the many advocates who uh, are involved and, and I worked with in the past, and I just want to, um, I don't want to miss anyone out, but I just want to give recognition to um, Ruth Lichtenstein, who is here today, who I have had many meetings with, and. Um, she came up with a curriculum which is going out to all my colleagues for that week of January 27th for Holocaust Education Week and we're using your curriculum uh, to use um, for our schools during that week and um, I want to thank you for everything you do and all the advocates today here including uh, um, the ADL we stand side by side all the time and I see many of my constituents, uh, Bella, uh, Bella Gubenko, uh, who does unbelievable work in, in southern Brooklyn, and so many others that I'm not going to stop mentioning because I'm going to miss out. But I just want to thank my colleagues because without the partnership of the members in the city council, uh, we wouldn't be able to accomplish or get this far. And finally, I want to thank our speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, he is the leader here in the city council. Without his support, none of this would have um, happened. So I really want to um, give him a shout out and say thank you, Speaker, for being who you are and for your sensitivity uh, towards all communities. And you are really special to me uh, because, because of your leadership, uh, millions of memories will never, never be forgotten. So at this time, I'm looking forward to giving this over back to the chair and hearing from uh, the Holocaust survivors just to let you know everything here today is being recorded. Um, so it could always be viewed later on. And people are watching um, uh, live right now on, on their screen and on, t on TV. So whatever you say is going to be public, so, and I'm looking forward to of taking your experience and what you bring us today and passing that message on um, for years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councilmember Dodge. 
Uh, before we call the first panel, I just want to take the opportunity to commend you again, to thank you, Council Member Dodge, for this wonderful <laughs> resolution. Very important. Thank you very much. And I want to take the opportunity also to commend and the advocate and uh, my colleagues also, all of you uh, for your uh, courage and your resilience and for willing to come to share with us your experience and your suffering as people. And again, uh, I want you to, to know that uh, we in New York City, we stand with you. We have been there with you and we will continue to stand with the Jewish community because no people should go through what you have been through before during the Holocaust. Thank you very much. Now, let us call uh, the first panel. Wuta Licha. Thank you very much. I've, you know, I'm sorry because of the, thank you. Very good, okay. Zahava Oga. Okay. Is that Lamuel? Samuel. Samuel? Samuel Boko? Samuel? Yeah, okay. Would you please come? come Let me see the second panel. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, would you please state your name for the record? And you can start any time. Oh. Ruth Lichtenstein. Mm -hmm. Can start? Okay. Uh, before you start, I just want to remind you that uh, that has been recorded. You are on TV. You know, no your problem. statement uh, okay. is going to become public. No problem. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Councilman Member Chaim Deutsch, for your crucial and very important initiative. Let me introduce myself. I was about seven years old when the Eichmann trial began in Jerusalem, Israel. One day during the course of the trial, I heard a knock on the door. There stood Leon. Leon was a man we considered our uncle, as during the Holocaust, Leon had spent eight months with my mother in a bunker in Warsaw, the capital of Poland, at that time almost entirely reduced to rubble by the Nazis. Leon was a man I knew as a pillar of strength, always smiling, always had a candy for me. But now he stood, all shaken, at the verge of tears. The moment my parents saw him, they took him into the dining room and locked the door. A few moments later, I heard bitter sobbing. It was Leon. As a little girl, I couldn't understand why he was crying. As an adult, I learned slowly and painfully all about the Holocaust. And then I understood that my parents, both of them survivors, whom I love so dearly, and they have friends whom I respected so much, had emerged alive by deeply scarred by, from a unique form of hell. It took me years to understand that the survivors wore a mask so we could go on living, so they could pretend to the world outside and to us, the children, that everything is normal and life is going on. Only as an adult did I finally begin to understand the trauma that the Eichmann trial, 
Eichmann was the Nazi criminal in charge of the execution of the final solution. What his trial represented for survivors, it forced them to confront the pain they carried within them and to remember the past they tried so hard to bury it. And that's why Leon was crying. Many years had passed. I lost my beloved father at a young age. He was a published author of more than 35 books about Polish Jewry. He was an intellectual. He was the founding editor of the Hebrew language Hamodia in Israel. I promised to continue his mission. <clears throat> Since then, in 21 years of me carrying the and serving as the publisher of the English language Hamodia and as the founder and director of Project Witness, which is Educational Resource Center, I have seen much. And what I have seen more was how we forget more than remember, and how I witness again and again that only 75 years passed, but we keep forgetting. Time and again, I'm witness at my desk of rise of anti-Semitism, which we like to believe that it happened only in Europe, but it does not. Again and again, I witness desperate calls that are coming from Jewish students on different campuses in New York City and out. Again and again, I hear about Jews who are walking in traditional garb on certain streets in Crown Heights or Williamsburg or even, you know, in Borough Park. And they are being mistreated, to say the least. And again and again, I ask myself, what are we doing to stop it? And what are we doing to remember? And what are we doing that it should never, ever happen again? So by the name of survivors, like my parents, by the name of my half-brother, who was only four years old when he was sent to Auschwitz just four months before liberation, I am here to support, to beg, to ask. Help us to give more education. Help us to stop this. Help us to make sure that it will never, ever, ever happen again in a city like New York and in our wonderful country like the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, would you please remain seated? Miss, don't leave yet, please. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Uh, the next one. My no, name. Would you please remain seated, please? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, you have to leave? Yes. I'm sorry about that, please. Okay. Feel free. Okay. Please feel free to leave. I'm sorry about that. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Zahava Anger. I was in Auschwitz when I was 13 years old. Can you speak to the microphone? I'm sorry. Am I not speaking to the microphone? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Consul. I'm sorry. First of all, I'm sorry I didn't prepare anything written. Mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what the questions would be what the circumstance going to be. So now I'm just apologizing, apologizing for that. But in short, I'm going to tell you, when I was 13 years old, we, we were taking my family and I to Auschwitz. My, I lost my father already two years earlier. They took him to a work camp. He never returned. He was later found out that he was murdered by the Ukraine people for no other reason than being Jewish. At the age of 14, I was, thank God, liberated. But before I was liberated, I was taken to a second camp and then to a third camp. I was liberated the last day of the war. And I was on my own at the age of 14. And I knew exactly what I have to do how to behave, where to go. And thank God, 
I succeeded. Today, I, have a, I am a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, a lot of kids, and thank God they're all useful and good citizens of the United States. The only fright that stayed with me, mainly it shouldn't reoccur again. And I'm not just saying it today, I said it the moment I entered this country. I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid of it. Because it could happen in a second. We're going to be quiet about one instant happening, anti-Semitism, it flares up in a moment. So we have to be very vigilant. But, and the main, one more thing I want to mention, that those who deny the Holocaust, I lost everyone. I lost my parents, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncle, extended families, everybody except one brother. So let them try to tell it to me that they didn't exist. So I really appreciate it. Appreciate your committee, what you're trying to do. And I hope you'll be very successful and it should never ever again occur again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you please uh, state your name, sir, for the record? Uh, my name is Samuel Baikov. I'm a Holocaust survivor, probably the youngest Holocaust survivor, because I'm going to tell you my story. You're going to understand why it's the youngest one. And first of all, I would like to thank you, Councilman I'm Deutsch, and all the councilmen who were sitting over here behind the tables for giving me opportunity to tell you my story, what was happened with me during the Second World War. Um, I would like, uh, thank you, I would like to share with you my story. When I was 18 months old, my family, 33 people, were transported to camp in Ukraine, Bogdanovka. Bogdanovka, this name never mentioned, not I attending several meetings in the United Nations, I attending several meetings Ukraine is never was mentioned as a concentration camp, but was a real concentration camp. In all the documents, you can find out it was content concentration camp. But this was horrible concentration camp, not like, let's, let's say, on uh, Nuremberg trial, Bogdanovka was mentioned as a third place after uh, Auschwitz, Dachau, and after a Nuremberg trial, it was named Bogdanovka. In Bogdanovka were killed 55,600 people. Between these people was 29 members of my family. These people were killed during the two months starting December 1941 uh, till February, I believe, 5. People was, were killed immediately. Group of 200 people were brought to this place. We put on a knee, we took for them clothes and uh, all the belongings and were killed and thrown in burning hay. In this case, no one 
person could be survived. And unfortunately, in some moment, it was given order from German army to stop killing people, and 127 people were survivors. Within these 127 people, it was four members of my family, me, my mother, my grandmother, and my sister. Like was mentioned before over here, like Chaim Deutsch said, council, council member, he said, it was forbidden story to talk about that. And in my family, very, very little I can hear from my parents, from my mother and grandmother, what was happened during the Second War. But when I became older and older, I start to find out a lot of things with, from people, stories about Second World War, about ghettos, about concentration camps. And I came to conclusion, and I can say today, in this particular moment, my dream came true. I can sit and express my feelings, express my story in front of people who is the same nationality as me. I am Jewish person. And all these 56 people, 56,400 people who were killed, it was pure Jews. Because let's say we're talking about in Kiev, Babi Yar. It was killed a lot of people, but within Jewish, it was all kind of different people. It was people mentally disturbed. It was uh, people, uh, gypsies, Ukrainian people, in, in particular in Bogdanovka, only people were killed and burned for one particular reason, because we were Jew only. This, is, this story is always was bothering me, and I decide to dedicate my life to be a messenger to people, because with God willing, I was survived when I was only five years, four years old. And God probably decided to make for me a messenger who can deliver to people this massacre what was happened, this terrible, horrible moments what we, I am not remember, but my sister, my mother, my grandmother, saw with their eyes like all the close people, close people from their family were murdered. What I can tell you about, uh, I did myself, I am not belong to no organizations, I'm not, I'm, I belong to organizations, but I do on my own. First, what I did, I, I have strong feeling like education, it's a very, and very, and very important moment for people who came through Holocaust, who understand like nobody else, like this supposed to be never happen again. And my family gave a monument as a present, as a donation to, as was mentioned if about uh, Kingsborough College. And we wrote over there a plaque which it says, for six million Jews were killed during the Second World War. I traveled to Ukraine. I found it place. I found it Bogdanovka. And I came over there, and I decided over there to put a monument too. But fortunately, one of survivor who lived in Israel, he put over there a monument. And I was staying and looking at monument, and I said, what I can do for these people who uh, were killed over here, because it's only ash you can find over there. You can find people, uh, even uh, bones of these people. And I decided to plant over there Memorial Park for 127 who were survivors. And we put over there 127 trees in the memory 
of everyone who were killed. And I d was thinking, like, trees, when it's going to grow, a uh, voice of these trees, when wind is going to come, is going to deliver to them our sorrow, and is going to deliver to all the world about we are witnessing these terrible moments, what was happened. Travel back to Odessa, where I came from. I decided to put a monument, which is, I would like to present to you some picture in Odessa. This is monument that we put in Kingsborough College. Uh, Excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous. One sec. I'm gonna. This is the monument that we put in Odessa for all who were killed in Transnistria. This, uh, sorry, this is one more. With, I would like to mention to you something. Uh, in Bogdanovka Middle School, which is principal of the school, Ukrainian gentleman with name Pospelov Alexei, he is doing such a tremendous job to keeping this memorial, which is I mentioned to you, with 127 trees, make memorial keeping clean, nice. And every year, on, 20, on, uh, on uh, January of 27th, in school, we make meetings about National Holocaust Day, <laughs> International Holocaust Day. This is the picture, students. And I brought for them uh, T-shirts you're going to see over there, uh, which is we wearing these T-shirts. I'm going to give you more pictures, please. And even winter time, they send me right now winter time pictures, which is way taking care about about uh, our memorial. This is two. This is and that. Even children, like five, six years old, helped us to plant the trees. Thank you. If somebody interested, you can see these pictures, please. And this is one more. We put over there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We put over there. Uh, you can see. Uh, my dream, my dream, to make. My dream to make Bogdanovka place where people are going to come from all over the world. When people are going to come to observe this place and where people can stay and think about this lo innocent lost lives in Bogdanovka. Uh, I'm fully complying with Chaim Deutsch uh, idea, and, uh, not idea, presentation, and everything else. And I have strong feeling like this is be very helpful. And, but but uh, every small thing what we can do to prevent this happen again. Everyone from us sitting in this auditorium can do something, small things. For instance, we did a pin about Transnistria, about lost lives and places where this life source was. I made bigger, and you can see. And our slogan is, straight of humanity is keep the memory alive. But 
if you're going to give me a few minutes more, I'm going to say something else. Mayor? Councilman? Councilman? Uh, yes, uh, this is such a very important topic and very important moment. Okay. So, um, uh, yes, good in you a few minutes. Thank you. Even very we have much. a lot of Thank other speakers, but I'm going to you some uh, two minutes more. Uh, one minute, uh, if you I'm want. I'll be, be short. Thank you very much. Yesterday, I'm special passed by uh, next to the Memorial Holocaust Memorial Park school. And children were staying outside. I came to the children, and I was a little bit afraid because like, I look like, like a stranger. But they're asking, kids, do you know what is this across the street? Because I, I'm not from that place. Nobody could answer me. This school is number of the school. It's District 21. Um, it's called um, Bay Academy School. I asked four people after I came to another four people, four children, and I asked them, we make like this, and we said, no, we don't know nothing about it. I traveled again, and I asked, only two girls said, hey, this is Holocaust. This is a Holocaust uh, uh, memorial. I said, do you know something about Holocaust? They said, no, 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 we don't know. I, came, I, I looked in the um, internet, and I see school mission. And I believe every school in their mission, they should put, like, they said over here, very nice phrases, like generation bring people to generation standards. One of the standard generation it should be standard to help to not to happen this again in the world. And I can say, and I can say, who is our future? Our future is our children. They are going to build future. We have to teach them how to build the future. We have to tell our children to not to forget this horrible and terrible times which was happened. Uh, and they gonna help build our future and build us from not to happen anymore. Antisemitism, Nazism, fascism, uh, Holocaust again, and it's not gonna happen again. Uh, hate, hatred, which is very rise right now in New York and all over in the world. Everywhere in the world I'm going, I'm traveling, I come to synagogues, I come over there, I speak with people, and I can see everyone scared. We have to do something. Like I, I said, me. I don't want to see the word me. I want to see we. we supposed to do. Take from people scaredness forever. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Now we are going to call the next man. Oh, sorry, sorry, one moment. This is give, give to council, council member. This is give to council member. Thank you. I, I promise him to give this speech. Thank you, sir. And one Thank more. Sure. Thank you. One more. My, very, very. My mother, my mother used to write uh, special books because we, we were starving in, uh, after when we came from concentration camp, we came to the ghetto. And my mom, uh, she used to write books for uh, Russian people and in Russian language about uh, food, about this and that and that. And every book, four words, which is she put on, on the top of this book, dedicated to Holocaust survivors. Two words dedicated to Holocaust survivors or help to not to happen again, it's very important. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Ed. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, may I? Yes, you may, sir. Now I'm going to call the next panel. Before I do that, I want to acknowledge that we have been joined by Council Member Lander. Do you want to vote now? Yes, please. Thank you yes, very much. Yes, uh, would you please? Uh, Continuation roll call vote, Resolution 673B, Council Member Lander. Request permission to very briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. First of all, Mr. Chair, thank you so much for convening this hearing. And of course, thank you to Councilmember Deutsch for bringing forward this important resolution. 
um, you know, obviously like all American Jews, all Jews around the world, I had family who were who were killed in the Holocaust. It's up for all of us very personal at this moment when hate crimes of all kinds are on the rise, but of course, uh, ones against Jews especially. Um, it's just really important that we underline what we're fighting against. And I really want to say thank you for bringing this resolution forward. I would like to be added as a co-sponsor to it, and I vote aye. Thank you. Vote now. Thank you, Mr. stands as six in the affirmative. Thank you very much, uh, Councilmember Lendert. Uh, now we're going to call the next panel. Tatiana Sigal. Evander, uh, is it Bernstein? Anat Bavio Thank you very much. One more. Yes. Can I give you four? Three. Yeah, three here. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is that? Rita? Rita. Yeah. Rita. Of son. Any one of you uh, can start any time, but before before we, you start, would you please uh, uh, state your name for the record? Uh, okay. Good afternoon, um, honorable members of uh, New York City Council. My name is Tatiana Siegel. Um, as a daughter of Holocaust survivors, and an attorney who assists uh, elderly Holocaust survivors in New York City. Um, I'm here to testify in support of Resolution 673. Uh, Resolution 673 is sponsored by Honorable Chaim Deutsch in order to recognize January 27th as Holocaust Remembrance Day. And the week uh, beginning on January 27th as a citywide week on Holocaust education in New York City. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, Resolution 673 is analogous to the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 60-7, uh, which passed in November of 2005. The United Nations Resolution came after a special session, which was held earlier that year in January 2005 during which the United Nations General Assembly marked the 60th anniversary of the liberation of the Nazi concentration camps and the end of the Holocaust. My family uh, was forever scarred by the tragedy of the Holocaust. Uh, my, my father is uh, 78 and my mom is 76, um, respectively. So um, my family experienced the Holocaust in Ukraine uh, when German army invaded the, the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941. Uh, my mom was just one month old. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss. I just yes. want to, I'm going to step out because uh, I got another public hearing going on at the same time. It will take me only a few minutes. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Dodge will take over for me. All right? Okay, sure. Thank you so much. All right. I'll be back right away. May I continue? Yes. yes. Okay. So, um, as I was saying, my mom, who is 77 years old um, right now, and she can't be here, um, um, sh she's disabled. So I'm here in her place um, to tell her story and the story of my family. Uh, my mom was one, one month old uh, at that time. Um, they resided in Odessa, uh, Ukraine. My baby mom, my grandmother, and my great-grandmother managed to evacuate from Odessa, Ukraine, to Uzbekistan. 
Uh, however, my great-grandfather and his other uh, two adult children stayed in Khmelnytsky, Ukraine, and they perished there. The town was occupied by the German army from July 1941 to March 1944. On November 4, 1941, 5,300 Jewish residents of the town and surrounding villages were shot by the Nazi. A ghetto was formed on December 14th, 1941, where all surviving Jewish residents had to resettle and were subject to forced labor. They were, subs they were subsequently killed in the, in the fall of 1942. More than 9,500 Jews were killed in the town in total. Um, as a result, my mom became an orphan during World War II because her mom died during the hardships of the of evacuation, and her father died at the front line fighting the Nazis. My other relatives on my maternal side perished in uh, Lvov, Ukraine, the city which experienced horrific pogroms in 1941 and mass shootings by the Nazi and their collaborators. Right now, as an elder law attorney, I assist many Holocaust survivors in New York City with health care and home care issues, as well as public benefits and housing concerns. While working as a temporary staff attorney in New York Legal Assistance Group, NILAG, in 2016 and 2018, I helped many Holocaust survivors with preparation of advanced directives and claims conference forms. When I met them in their homes, in self-help community centers, and in Jewish community centers, I learned about their stories of survival and hardships during World War II. For example, one elderly client in Brooklyn told me that she was born in Belgium in 1933. Her parents were killed by the Nazis, and she was saved by nuns, Catholic nuns, who took her and she stayed in the monastery until she turned 13 years old. Then a Jewish organization transported her with other orphans to the United States. She went to high school in Manhattan and later she married and had two children. As an attorney from Nilag, I prepared a health care proxy and power of attorney for her, for this client so that her adult daughter could assist her by going to the bank and dealing with her finances on her behalf. My NILA colleagues and I have heard many moving stories of survival from elderly Holocaust survivors in New York City. These survivors came from Poland, Moldova, Belarus, Ukraine, France, Belgium, Romania, and other European countries. Nonprofit organizations such as NILAG, Self Help Community Services, JAZA, UGA Federation have assisted thousands of elderly Holocaust survivors in New York City. Due to the efforts of social workers and lawyers from Self Help Community Services, many Holocaust survivors have home care assistance from Claims Conference which helps them to, to stay in their homes with dignity and respect they deserve. NILAG also has Holocaust Compensation Assistance Project, which provides free legal assistance to Holocaust survivors in the areas of compensation and restitution. Um, Elie Wiesel, a Nobel Prize winner and Holocaust survivor from Romania, uh, once said, how do we mourn for six million people who died? And he responded, they left us without a trace, and we are their trace. As children of Holocaust survivors, we have a duty to remember and to never forget. We have a duty to educate our children and others about the genocide and mass murder. We have a duty to, to teach about Holocaust, because to teach about Holocaust is to teach about the nature and dynamics of mass crimes, the, like genocides, crimes against, I'm sorry, crimes against humanity and war crimes. 
In addition, I, I would like to add that um, just on Monday, this Monday, um, President Trump uh, signed into law bipartisan legislation named for the late Holocaust survivor and Nobel Prize winner Elie Wiesel. The Elie Wiesel Genocide and Atrocities Prevention Act aims to improve the United States response to emerging uh, or potential genocides. And um, this uh, legislature was passed uh, final, vote, uh, final votes last month in the Senate and in the House of Representatives. In conclusion, um, I encourage the members of the committee to support Resolution 673. And I hope that once this re resolution is passed, uh, the New York City Department of Education, in partnership with the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, will, de will develop the age-appropriate curriculum about the Holocaust, incorporating such important and moving works as the Diary of Anne Frank, and the novels by Elie Wiesel. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana, and thank you for sharing your family story. Uh, it was really touching and moving and very important for people to know. Um, uh, all right, next is Evan Verstein from the ADL. I just want to say a few words about Evan. Um, over the last uh, three, four months, we, as I said before, we had an increase of hate crimes um, specifically targeting the Jewish community, but in the broader community throughout New York City. So I had the pleasure uh, of standing with Evan and the ADL at almost a dozen unity rallies across the city, uh, standing up against hate, against bias, against any individual, anyone that is attacked here in the city of New York is an attack on all of us. So thank you, Evan, for everything you do you. on behalf of um, the community. So a uh, few could go ahead with your testimony. Thank you. No, thank you, Councilmember Joyce, for having me today and representing the ADL and to all the other uh, members of the City Council. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, um, Evan, just give me one second. Sure. I just want to, f um, we have Councilmember uh, Perkins here. So if you um, want to go ahead and vote. Um, Continuation good. roll call. Aye. Resolution 673B, Councilmember Perkins. Final vote on that is now seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you very much. And what happens is that after um, it passes here in the committee, it goes to a full vote to the full council, which is 51 uh, members of the council for a full vote, and that's going to happen later this month. So, okay, Evan, go ahead. Oh, thank you so much again, uh, Councilmember Deutsch, and for all of your friendship support uh, over this difficult time, especially over the last uh, you know, six to eight months here in New York, uh, the amount of hate crimes, especially seen in Brooklyn, uh, towards the, the Jewish community has been very disturbing. Uh, at the ADL, uh, my name is Evan Bernstein. I'm the New York Regional Director for the Anti-Defamation League. Uh, we're pleased that the City Council is considering ways to commemorate the Holocaust, uh, including K-12 education programming here in New York City, as it serves as a constant reminder to our city and our country and the world that the atrocities uh, that mankind had and the audacity that they could to commit them. Uh, more importantly, a, a full week of Holocaust education would squarely fall in line with the ADL's mission and values of stopping the defamation of the Jewish people and securing justice and fair treatment for all, particularly those of inclusion and respect in the hopes that eventually all citizens in, citizens in our city and country will establish relationships held by the fabric of those values without labels to separate them. You know, as the numbers I know were mentioned in uh, some of your opening uh, remarks by the claims conference uh, studies that have been done, I think it's shocking that 31 percent of Americans believe, uh, based on polling, that uh, only only two million or less died in the Holocaust. 66 percent don't know that what Auschwitz is, and 22 percent of millennials had never heard of the Holocaust. Uh, clearly, there is a need for education. Uh, the, educa the education that the ADL has is, has had a long history providing this kind of Holocaust education to schools across the country, and especially here in New York, and bigger programmatic tradition of providing anti-bias training to educators and students. And you can count on us as an ally, as I've said to you, uh, in private, and now I'm saying publicly. And we, if this uh, important resolution in, in, uh, you know, in six, uh, Resolution 673 passes, uh, we want uh, to be much uh, a part of this as possible. Uh, in 2005, the Anti-Defamation League launched an Echoes and Reflections uh, campaign uh, a curricula a resource and written guide by the ADL in partnership with Yad Vashem and the USC Shoah Foundation is a guide to empower middle school and high school educators with the dynamic classroom lesson materials, professional development, free of charge. And today this guide has impacted more than 50,000 educators 
reaching an estimated 5.2 million students across the United States at no cost. Uh, I know there's a lot of other partners that are here as well, and we all are here, I know, to stand with you in the City Council to provide uh, the educational resources needed to get to as many students as possible. Uh, personally, uh, in the Holocaust, my family uh, was in Denmark, and thank God for righteous Christians that were able to protect uh, my family through the Holocaust, and I know so many uh, did not have that, but this is something that's near and dear to me, near and dear, near and dear to our organization, and again, I can't thank you enough for your support of this and how necessary Holocaust education is at this moment in time. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for that shout out um, to to mention the right uh, the righteous Christian, and um, I just want to mention that we have someone here, uh, Svetlana Gobenko, who just um, uh, planted a tree in the Holocaust in uh, memorial in Sheepshead Bay uh, for those uh, uh, the righteous amongst the, the nation who helped those Holocaust survivors and hit them during the Holocaust and put their lives in the line and at risk. So thank you very much for your partnership, and it's only with the partnership of organizations, individuals such as yourself, that we can get the message out and and uh, remember um, that uh, Holocaust um, for future generations. So thank you, Evan, for, for everything that you do. So now I'd like to ask Rita, um, on behalf of the Muse uh, Museum of Jewish Heritage. Oh, okay, so. Whatever. You could go. Okay. Okay. So Anat, you go first. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Anat Barber, and I am the professional at UJ Federation of New York, who has the privilege of leading our community initiative for Holocaust survivors, through which last year alone UJ cared for nearly 10,000 survivors living in the New York City, Long Island, and Westchester areas. And I also have the privilege of being the granddaughter of four Holocaust survivors. Uh, including one of the oldest living survivors of Schindler's List, which you mentioned you plan to screen next week or two weeks from now. Uh, through our programming, we support socialization programs that relieve the crippling isolation that many survivors experience. We provide individualized support from specially trained social workers, emergency cash assistance, legal aid that was referred to by others here. And we wrap survivors, really, in the warm embrace of community and assure them that they're not alone. UJA applauds the leadership of the City Council for its continued investment in Holocaust survivors through the Elie Wiesel Holocaust Survivor Initiative, through which many of our nonprofit partners receive funding to provide these services to Holocaust survivors. And a refrain we hear time and again from the clients who we serve is that when they pass away, they worry not only that their own stories will be forgotten, but that the stories that they hold of their loved ones and family members who did not survive will perish with them. And our compassionate providers of care, our social workers and our attorneys, always ensure our clients that those memories, as they share them with the professionals, will live on. But we must widen the circle of responsibility of those who will transmit the survivor stories beyond those direct service providers to the broader New York City community. We have the profound distinction of living amongst the last generation of Holocaust survivors, about 40,000 of whom live in our area, and we must ensure that their legacy lives on and bear the sacred responsibility to never forget what happens. We hope to see Resolution 673B to fruition to accomplish this sacred goal. And I'm here today to advocate on behalf of establishing January 27th as a New York City-wide Holocaust Memorial Day and the week of the 27th as Holocaust Education Week. As was mentioned by others, the resolution holds a sense of urgency and timeliness. The urgency is real, the ignorance is growing, as was mentioned. Many don't even know what the word Auschwitz signifies or what it means, and it's shocking and horrifying. By establishing this Holocaust Memorial Day and Education Week, we'll be providing the platform for schools, organizations, politicians, and others to join in honoring the memory of those who perished and preserving the stories of all, those who survived and those who perished. As the population of survivors wanes, we have a unique responsibility to pay tribute to them and amplify their voices in a meaningful way. Creating an official Holocaust Memorial Day and Education Week in New York City will allow us to do just that. January 27th, the day when Auschwitz was liberated, represents the physical transition from imprisonment of so many to their freedom. It's only fitting that this be the day that we offer the symbolic freedom of knowing that their stories will not perish with them. UJA Federation again thanks the City Council, Representative Deutsch for taking up this important resolution and for its continued support and compassion for this vulnerable population. And we look forward to partnering with you on helping make this a reality. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anat, and thank, uh, thanks to UJA Federation for everything that they do. Um, go to Rita. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. My name is Rita Yosefson, and I am the Deputy Chief of Staff at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust in Battery Park City. We are New York's Holocaust Memorial Museum and the third largest Holocaust museum in the world. Our mission is to educate diverse audiences about Jewish life before, during, and after the Holocaust. We wholeheartedly support this resolution recognizing January 27, 2019 as Holocaust Remembrance Day and the week beginning on January 27 as a citywide week of Holocaust education in New York City. Each year we serve more than 60,000 students who visit the museum. And this year we launched New York's Holocaust Curriculum, a series of lesson plans and educational resources that we developed with the support of the New York City Department of Education. With the curriculum, we are poised to reach an even greater number of students throughout the boroughs in their own classrooms. In our public program offerings, Holocaust remembrance and education are inextricably linked. There are particular moments in the year when we invite our greater community to gather, remember, and learn. One such moment is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, which is observed on January 27th, the date of the liberation of Auschwitz, as we discussed. The United Nations designates a particular theme for contemplation and action each year. This year's theme is Holocaust Remembrance, Demand and Defend Your Human Rights. In response to this theme, the museum will offer programs that encourage public audiences to consider the lessons of the past and their relevance to our shared future. January 27th begins a week of Holocaust education at the museum. This week will include professional development for teachers on the Chancellor's Conference Day of Professional Learning on the 28th, and a series of public programs. We will present two films and post-screening talks from preeminent historians, a public lecture by a leading Holocaust educator, and a community project to listen to, learn from, and discuss the recorded testimonies of Jewish American veterans who liberated the Nazi concentration camps. Our International Holocaust Remembrance Day programming will culminate with the opportunity to hear from a Holocaust survivor as she shares her life story in her own words. And Gabriella is here today, which I'm excited about. Uh, at the museum, we have found that testimony is often what gets through to visitors, communicating the lived experience of history and allowing people to make human connections. During this week of Holocaust education, museum admission is free to all. And I should also mention that uh, New York City public school students and educators, they're, they're always welcome and it's always free for them. We invite our community to light candles, spend time in our memorial garden, and engage in conversation about the legacies we all carry. The international nature of commemoration on January 27 communicates that Holocaust remembrance and education are global responsibilities. The connectedness of our modern world and the diversity of our local communities makes this commemoration uniquely meaningful. The museum wholly supports this resolution and re remains committed to providing a space where all New Yorkers can gather to learn and remember. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, next panel, uh, Sandy Myers, Self-Help Community Services, Gabrielle Major, and they, Janaya Carvin, yeah, come on up. And I just want to say thank you, Janaya. Um, you, you can come up. You can, testifying. Thanks for coming down. And uh, I just want to mention that Janaya is part of an organization. Uh, she's a very big part of an organization called RAGE, Russian American Jewish Experience. And I'm fortunate that uh, every Friday night I speak to the group. And Janaya has a lot of passion in her. And I'm sure I'm going to see some passion when you speak, working with Holocaust survivors. So we'll start first from also, good friend Sandy Myers, who had opportunity to come down to self-help and see your work firsthand, and it's amazing when you see Holocaust survivors enjoying themselves and having hot meals, and really, uh, some of them who have no family here in New York, and you really, it's uh, you put them all together, and they're all like one big happy family. So, it really um, amazes me for all the work that you do, Sandy. So go ahead. Well, thank you, Council Member. It's a privilege to be here. I would like to first have Gabriella speak, just because her family is here and is on a time constraint, and then if okay. we can hop back to me, I would appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Well, not, they're not all here anymore, but distinguished members of City Council, fellow survivors, my family, all guests. My name is Gabriella Major. 
I feel very privileged and honored to be part of this important day, and I really thank you, Representative Deutsch. As a child survivor of the Holocaust from Hungary, invaded last by the Nazis in 1944, it is quite a miracle that I am alive and here to celebrate the resolution to have January 27th as Holocaust Remembrance Day for New York. I was invited to give my testimony as a survivor. Being a two-year-old child at the time, I was not destined to live but to be murdered in the crematory of Auschwitz. Together with my mother and my grandmother, we were herded into the ghetto in Debrecen, Hungary, then squeezed into cattle cars for three days without any food and water. Somehow, miraculously, the train took a detour and we wound up in a concentration camp called Strasshof near Vienna. I was between life and death for six weeks. My grandmother died in the camp, and 28 members of my extended family were killed in Auschwitz. We rebuilt from the ashes after the war back in Hungary, living through once again persecutions under the communist regime. Eventually, we escaped from Hungary in 1956 after the Hungarian Revolution. Soon, we were able to come to the United States and rebuild again our lives in freedom this time. I have devoted the last five years to Holocaust education of students and adults as a docent at the Museum of Jewish Heritage. I also had the greatest experience in an incredible program called the Witness Theater, sponsored by Self Help and UJA, where survivors together with high school juniors and seniors learn about each other. The students then enact vignettes from the survivors' harrowing experiences, telling their stories through an amazing play. In addition, I have been speaking to groups of students from fifth grade through high school and college throughout the city, Long Island, Westchester, and neighboring states. I am very passionate about teaching children and adults about the horrors and the lessons of the Holocaust. It is vital and of utmost importance to have every student know what happened and how we can prevent such genocide from happening again. If not now, when? Unfortunately, we are losing many survivors, but we still have much to do. We must remember and never forget. That is why we need to insist that everyone know about the Holocaust. The children are our ambassadors, our hope for the future. I hope that they will speak up and will not tolerate prejudice, anti-Semitism, or hatred of any group. My hope and my prayer is that through small acts of kindness and good deeds, we will repair the world one person at a time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next uh, speaker. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is good Sandy afternoon. Myers, and I'm the Vice President for External Affairs and Communications at Self-Help Community Services. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Eugene and Deutsch for being here, and Councilmember Deutsch for sponsoring this resolution, and also for attending our coffee houses and being part of the self-help community. We really appreciate it. So self-help's commitment is to serve as the last surviving relative to every remaining Holocaust survivor, and we're th we're honored to be the largest provider of services to this community in North America and touch the lives of about 4,500 survivors annually through our case management, social work services, our socialization events that Councilmember Deutsch referenced, um, and, and, and home care services that enable them to age in their homes and communities. Our commitment to serving this population extends beyond services as well as to educating the next generation so that never again remains true and we continue to pass these lessons on. As Gabriella mentioned, one of the programs that we're thrilled to be running since 2012 is Witness Theater. 
which pairs together high school students with Holocaust survivors for a year-long drama therapy program by which they are able to talk about their history and it culminates with a public performance whereby the students reenact key moments of the survivors' lives with them together on stage. This is a transformative experience for both the survivors as well as the students who have the opportunity to learn about history and to bring history to life. What's really special for us that helps us further this educational objective and why we're so thrilled to be part of this hearing today is that in the last few months we concluded the production of a documentary called Witness Theater, the film, that documents the process of Witness Theater and the relationships that are built between the high school students and the survivors as well as the public performance where we reach larger diverse audiences including at the Museum of Jewish Heritage in the last couple of years who have hosted us um, as well as public and private schools throughout New York City and we're working with a distributor to get this film out. I'm working with Menemsha Films for those of you who are familiar with it. In addition to the film which we hope will be accessible to audiences soon after we um, conclude with a few film festivals, we are developing not only a website but also a study guide that we hope will get into the hands of high school educators in both public and private schools to use together with the film. And the film provides an opportunity to learn about the Holocaust through the stories that we're hearing about um, of the survivors. We look forward to working with the City Council in Holocaust Education Week by using um, the film and the trailer, which we encourage everyone to take a look at at witnesstheaterthefilm.com. And we're happy to, to see this resolution move to the full City Council for a vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker. Hi, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Janae good Kerbin. Afternoon. Firstly, before I begin, I just want to say thank you so much to Councilman Deutsch um, and everyone here. I'm honestly, as I mentioned before, I'm not anyone major. I have no title attached to my name. In fact, I'm just a regular girl. Um, I live in Great Neck, New York. I just graduated from law school about two years ago, Toro Law School. And um, my passion was to go for elder law and special needs law. A few years ago, um, I'm going to make this short because I know people have to go, but I'll just give you a little bit of what I want to say today. I'm really nothing major, but a few years ago, um, I didn't grow up so religious. I didn't grow up with much education about the Holocaust. Admittedly and embarrassingly, I'm going to be honest, I'm one of the recipients, even now, to still be learning about my heritage. Unfortunately, my father passed away four years ago, and as I was learning more about my heritage, learning more about Judaism, um, going to Shabbat dinners in Brooklyn at this wonderful woman, Faye Zakheim's home. I met Councilman Deutsch, and I met so many people that just had such a beauty and, and love for their heritage, and I just felt so lost about it. I said, what is going on? Why is it me, post-college, young girl? How come no one my age knows about this? And so after I graduated, um, you know, I graduated two years ago, I... I was at a Shabbaton upstate, it was a weekend away, and Dr. Fagy Zakam actually had someone there, and her mother is a Holocaust survivor. And there was a man, Mr. Leon Goldenberg, that spoke about his mother. And I sat around with other college students, my friends, um, rage students, people that never grew up with it, that are, were totally secular, and I felt so lost. I felt so disconnected to my heritage. Here I am, I was keeping Sabbath, I was keeping kosher. I went to Israel on a trip, but I wasn't feeling what it really felt like to be Jewish. And so Leon Goldberg's mother gets up, and Dr. Zakheim's mother gets up, and I start crying inside. And I say, why is it? God, I don't understand, something's missing in my life. I graduated from law school, I have an MBA, I have an amazing family, amazing people in my life. Yeah, I feel so void in my Jewish heritage, and I'm embarrassed. I'm really embarrassed when I'm, I'm humbly telling you this because I feel like I'm not anything major, but I'm, I'm speaking from the person that actually is receiving these type of things, gifts in my life because I met these people that helped me. So after that weekend, I was so moved. His mother, he spoke about his mother and the Holocaust, and I still felt so lost. So it was June time, and Rabbi Lynn, who is the rabbi of Meor group, it's a Polish, they do like Polish trip, Poland trips and Holocaust trips for college students. He was there on that Shabbaton, and he had told everyone, does anyone want to go on a trip? 
And I was like, you know, honestly, if this is from God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise my hand and do it. So at first I was like, you know, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. I'm not working at a law firm. I'm just, I, I love community work, so maybe I'll, I'll apply. I applied and I got accepted. And the weekend before that, um, I had met with my dad's aunt, my dad's sister, um, who knows a lot about her heritage, and my aunt, my dad's second cousin, who's a genealogist. She started telling me about where I came from. She spoke about my grandparents that came from Poland, from Russia. She spoke about my great grandmother who escaped Nazi Germany because my great uncle sponsored her and my grandparents and their brothers. And as we're talking, my aunt, who's not religious, she's not interested, she comes out with a platter with Shabbat candles. And I say to her, Aunt Barbara, where did you get that from? She's like, these are your great grandmothers and she brought them from Poland. And I looked at those candles and I said, she could have brought money, she could have brought anything she wanted, but she brought those candles. And so from that, uh, that day, I said, I have to go to Poland. I went to Poland. That trip utterly changed my life. And I'm speaking from my heart. I'm not, I'm not anything major. I'm not even writing any. I didn't write, prepare anything for today. But that trip changed my life. I went to Auschwitz. I went to the camps with 30 college students, my friends, Rabbi Lynn, Rabbi Sperber, who runs this trip. They changed my life. And everyone on that trip, we saw the gas chambers. Obviously, we can't compare with Gabriella's story. But I'm speaking from my heart. And I was so moved. And I said, what am I going to do? And Rabbi Lynn said at that trip, to everyone on that trip, he said, you know, on college campuses, there was a story of someone that asked one of the students, do you know what Auschwitz is? And someone raised their hand and said, is it a restaurant? And as I left that trip, Rabbi Lynn told everyone on that group, Yes, you got this amazing sponsored trip. Yes, it's a birthright trip, great. But what are you gonna do about it when you get back home? And that is why I'm here today. I am not a big speaker, but I'm an ambassador because I think it's really important for everyone in this room to know that as a young person, I see it. And after that trip, I actually ended up, I didn't have a job, I still don't, but God willing, I'll find the right place. I applied to a job at the JCC in Brooklyn. As a lawyer, my parents are law lawyers, and I have a passion to help seniors and special needs. It's not about the money, it's about helping people. So the JCC offered me a job. I was there for a little bit, and now I'm volunteering, and I was so excited. And everyone was like, why are you so excited? I'm like, you don't understand. I need to meet these survivors. I just came out of Poland, and for them to go through all that hell and atrocity and still stand up, those are my heroes. Not someone with a million ESQ MBAs behind their backs. Not people with a million dollars in the bank. The people that went through that hell and stood up and got their lives together, like Gabriella, like all those other survivors that spoke today, those are my heroes. And when I went to the JCC and saw them, I saw their numbers on their arm, and I said, how the hell does no, excuse my language, how the heck does no one my age or younger know about the Holocaust? And I held their hands and I said, you are my heroes. I'm sorry I'm crying, Councilman, but I had to say this on record because I think that this resolution is super important. And I really hope that everyone in this room, all the Councilman people understand that it is so important to recognize where we come from it is so important to teach the younger generation. It is so important to continue this mission, to educate, to teach, to love, to reach out, to advocate, and to truly make a difference. Oh it's my honor and it's my pleasure. Thank you so much and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Thank you. You don't have to be sorry. As you said, you are an ambassador. You got a lot to do. And I think that, you know, you have the willing, you, you have the energy to make a difference in this society right now. And I commend you for your courage also. And one thing that you said is very important. You were frank and honest. You say that you don't know enough about your, your culture. You are not the only young person <laughs> to be in this situation. But the great thing now you take the decision, you say, no, I have to know more, and I have to do something. This is great. I commend you for that. Thank you, Thank so you for touching this Thank you now, so much. Now, Council Member Deutsch. Yes, I just want to add something, Janaya, and 
you know, what people don't realize and something that you don't realize, and I will say that you mentioned all your role models. And what the role models never get to mention that you don't know is that they are not your role models. You become our role models. And exactly what you just said um, is something that we, who you call role models, learn from you. So um, thank you for coming down today. Thank you. And I did say that you have a lot of passion <laughs> in you. So I wasn't wrong. You didn't, you didn't uh, make me, uh, didn't prove me wrong. <laughs> And I just want to say thank you. And and finally, I just want to say we have thank this, uh, before I give it over to the chair, um, when my father got his transfer papers out of Mauthausen, first uh, it was Auschwitz, Mauthausen, Gerritskirchen, so I went back to the, um, the Yad Vashem, I actually got his original, uh, a copy of his transfer papers. And his prisoner number was 124812. And that is when my father realized that no matter what happens, he will survive the Holocaust because if you add up those numbers, it equals Chai, 18, and 18 is life, means life. And that's when he knew that um, he could do whatever he wants, he could sneak in food to others because he will survive and he had that faith that he will survive. And that is the faith that you have uh, right now and that is the faith you gave all of us and all the people that are watching now. And your faith will be a lesson for future generations mm -hmm. and um, so thank you very much thank, thank you, you councilman thank you everyone you guys are awesome <laughs> thank you thank you very much to all the members of the panel thank you, thank you. and uh, I want to take the opportunity also to thank Councilmember Dodge uh, uh, for being so kind to take over the uh, public hearing for me when I went to the uh, health uh, committee meeting thank you very much thank you now let me call the next uh, speaker Avram Herk. He left? Okay. So that. He left also? All right. So since we don't have no, no more speaker, but I just want to take the opportunity one more time to thank every one of you for your testimonies. It was a very special moment. It was a great moment for the Jewish community. And I thank also for New York City. And I want to take the opportunity also to commend one more time, one more time, Council Member Dodge, for this uh, remarkable resolution. And I'm very proud to be one of the co-sponsors. Thank you very much. With this, uh, the meeting is adjourned.